What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Toys, Noise, and Action Figures. I'm your host, Red Cheney, and uh, today I'm coming to you with a movie review. Um, as many of you know, I was greatly anticipating the release of the Black Panther Marvel Studios Disney uh, release of the Black Panther movie, and I got a chance to go check it out in IMAX and all of its imax -y brilliance, and um, that was on the uh, early release night on Thursday night. Uh, my wife and I went to go see it then. And then we also went back and saw it on Saturday night um, because it was that much of a good movie. Had to go back, had to go support it once again. And I'll be going again to see it, I uh, believe this coming Friday. I'm going to go try to check out another showing of it. Um, but uh, again, we're doing a movie review on the Black Panther movie. And I'm just going to jump right into it, let you know that it was an awesome movie. It was a an experience i will say that it was definitely an experience it was a chance to see something entirely different um it, and when i say entirely different it really is an entirely different uh movie watching experience because um it's not just your standard superhero movie where there's uh uh the hero the protagonist who is going against the villain uh it has so many layers to it um just give it gives you action uh, gives you a hero, it gives you a, a social commentary, you get a, a, a superhero movie mixed in with a spy espionage movie, it's a little bit of 007, a little bit of uh, Captain America, a little bit of, uh, again, socially conscious subject matter, so it, it, it covers so many levels, it was an excellent movie, Chadwick Boseman, um, once again, delivers a brilliant performance, um, if you're familiar with Chadwick Boseman from movies like uh 42 where he's uh it's a biopic of jackie robinson if you're familiar with him from the uh james brown uh movie where he starred as james brown in that biopic um thurgood marshall um brilliant actor and he and he delivers those same brilliant acting chops in uh the role of uh prince and king t'challa and the black panther um also uh, the other actors and actresses in the movie. Michael B. Jordan uh, delivers an awe-inspiring performance as Eric Killmonger. A very captivating character, very absolute um, in the, puts you in the mindset of uh, Anakin Skywalker, uh, Darth Vader type character. You hate him as a villain because he's a brilliant villain, but at the same time, uh, you have some sympathy for him because of the circumstances that have created um, Killmonger. Um, Ulysses S. Claw, played by Andy Serkis. Um, for those of you that may be familiar with some of his other work, that are familiar with some of his other work, uh, he's, uh, the voice actor, uh, character actor for Gollum in the Lord of the Rings, uh, uh, movies, um, and the, uh, Hobbit movies, um, or, uh, uh, he's also, uh, Caesar in the Planet of the Apes movies. He's a great actor. Great voice actor, brings a lot of life, a lot of character uh, to his characters. Um, uh, he reprises his role as Ulysses Claw in this movie. Uh, we last saw him in uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. Brilliant performance. Martin Freeman as uh, Everett Ross. Um, I love the fact that he comes in and he's he, he represents, I guess, a westernized culture and, um, and uh, does a good job of <laughs> taking a bit of a... Uh, a ribbing from um, the uh, Wakandans uh, in this movie. I like their relationship with him in this movie, and I like the role that he played in this movie. What can I say about Denai? Denai was, she was badass. Uh, I think that's the best way to describe her. It's, it's, there's so many adjectives you can use to describe Denai's character uh, as Okoye in this movie, and she is bad as as it comes uh her and the rest of the door melange in this movie brilliant um they're uh you don't want to mess with them <laughs> and i really enjoyed watching the action sequences with her and with the rest of the door melange uh unit they they're excellent excellent they were, they put me in the mindset of warriors and th the 300 movie they put me in that mindset how fierce they are in battle my man daniel kalea uh from get out very very dynamic conflicted character in this movie um i love the fact that uh anyway without doing too much of a spoiler um on his character he's he, he's a soldier and he uh and he plays a dedicated one but he also has 
his emotion involved in it. He's also Koye's husband. He plays Koye's love interest in this movie. I, I believe her husband. It shows the dynamic between them and their loyalties to Wakanda and their roles in in the Wakanda, uh, Wakanda in, uh, as soldiers. Angela Bassett, as always, my compliments. Angela Bassett. Um, she brings exactly what you would expect her to bring uh, to this cast. She's she's an amazing actress, as we all know, uh, from her role as uh, Tina Turner and, and in countless other movies, uh, Waiting to Exhale, uh, some of our favorites. Uh, she brings those same chops uh, to this role in this movie and um, and plays the queen mother. John Kanai uh, is uh, King T'Chaka. Uh, he reprises his role from the uh, Civil War uh, movie, and um, and uh, you, you see the dynamic between him and his son in this movie, King T'Challa, or Prince T'Challa. The fact that you learn, uh, like in this movie, just like in the Godfather movies, where you see um, that uh, Vito Corleone, his character, had some backstory to it. You get a chance to see that in Godfather Part Two. But you see that there were choices that they had to make as the leader, as the patriarch, or King Chichaka's depiction as king. There are just some decisions that you have to make that aren't... They, they make the character seem a lot less absolute as you would assume that they are. Because, um, again, in Civil War, you got a chance to see him as King Chichaka before he was assassinated. And um, when you get a chance to see some of the backstory, you get to see some difficult decisions that they're forced to make. And uh, King T'Challa is learning that it's not as uh, simple or as absolute as you would have um, thought that it was. Letitia Wright as Shuri. Um, and she plays the younger sister or the little sister of uh, King T'Challa. And uh, she is the brains and the mastermind behind the tech in Wakanda. And the tech that Black Panther uh, uses um, to protect Wakanda. Um, and she makes Tony Stark look like an amateur or an aspiring inventor. Um, the technology that they have, uh, using vibranium and Wakanda is unsurpassed and she wields it like the, uh, tech smith that she is. Uh, she's, she, and she's a scene stealer, does a little bit of comic relief, but she's badass at the same time. And she's very fitting because in the comic book, she's uh, ends up taking on the mantle of Black Panther at one point. And you you could see some little hints in that, in this movie. Sterling K. Brown as Nujobu. Um, he plays King T'Chaka's brother in this movie. And um, you get to see the dynamic between those two. And uh, the plot thickens. I'll, I'll leave it at that. The plot thickens uh, between them. And uh, it's a great... Uh, pivotal point in this movie uh which makes it very godfather like there, there's a lot of parallels between the um dynamic story telling in the godfather and this movie and, the, and that's why it makes it so compelling along with it being an action movie at the same time where are you going to get all of those things in one movie and that's why this movie is so brilliant and it's such a game changer another notable performance in this movie forrest whitaker um, you know, Forrest Whitaker is always very stoic. He always brings a certain sense of statesman in his movies, in his roles, and uh, and this is no different. Um, again, a great plot twist in this movie involves his character. It's something so worth seeing. It was such a surprise, it, 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 and and it really, it really uh, is very gut wrenching. Um, in his performance, in his storyline, um, in this movie with Forrest Whitaker. Definitely something you're not going to want to miss. Lupita Nyong'o, uh, her character as Nakia. Um, and she also plays the love interest. She's actually the ex of uh, King T'Challa. And they have uh, a history um, that would, I would love to actually see it in a, in a, um, in a prequel kind of spinoff movie at some point. Uh, I, obviously, I don't, I don't know if that would ever happen. But uh, there's enough there in this movie that it makes you go, wow, I, I would love to just see why she's his ex and what transpired uh, prior to uh, this movie. But uh, she's And she's gorgeous. She's a beautiful... I mean, there's so many beautiful sisters in this movie. I mean, it's... And, and, and this movie doesn't have the same 
stereotypical tropes that so many other movies that have been greenlit in Hollywood involving black actors and actresses. This movie is absolutely regal. Um, and, there, and there's so much of a cultural significance in this movie, um, which is why you have to love it so much. Let me get into the cultural significance of the movie uh, real quick. Uh, there's been much ado about the fact that this is a, a majority black production uh, with black actresses and black actors and um, writers and the director. Ryan Coogler, hats off to you, brother. Um, man, awesome storytelling, awesome direction in this movie. I've seen a few review reviewers uh, nitpick at certain things about the CGI. The average viewer isn't even going to pick up those minute details. Um, so there's that. Ryan Coogler does a absolutely brilliant job, as always, just like he did in uh, Fruitville Station, just like he did in Creed, uh, one of my favorite of the Rocky um, mythos and storyline. But the cultural significance of this movie and the fact that you're able to package it in an action movie, a lot of people are missing the fact that, yeah, there are plenty of dramas that involve black actors and actresses, uh, but we end up not being the main protagonist in those movies. I don't know how many slave movies we, we're gonna get. That story's been told, and there's plenty more stories to tell, but if you're gonna tell a slave movie, give me a Harriet Tubman. Give me, a, again, I, I, I loved Birth of a Nation because it doesn't show us as just the victims, it shows us going, hey, we're going to take the situation into our own hands. And that's important to actually show. You've got to show every aspect of it, not just the victimhood and um, us uh, needing the assistance of the patriarch, the, the white patriarch in the movie. This movie trails a whole new path in that regard. And, and that's why you got to love it as, as much as you do. We, we, we get plenty of comedies. We're always doing comedies. Um, we're always some form of comic relief in other movies that we're not starring in. We've, we've done a great job of playing supporting cast members. Even in the Oscar-winning movie, Glory, um, you've got brilliant actors like uh, Denzel Washington. You've got Morgan Freeman. But again, they're not the star characters. I believe Denzel may have won an Oscar uh, for Best Supporting Actor in that movie. Uh, he's playing opposite uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Matthew Broderick. He's playing opposite Matthew Broderick. Um, in that movie. This is Denzel Washington. Again, I know it's like 1989 or something like that, but still, it's Denzel Washington, Morgan Freeman, and uh, they're not the main characters in the movie. The movie's really about uh, Colonel Shaw. It's really about, it's his story in the position of uh, playing a colonel in the Massachusetts 54th. So, um, this is a movie where the star, the main protagonist, is Chadwick Boseman's character as King T'Challa, and his transition and his nation and all of the uh, the dynamics and the hills and value, valleys um, that he has to uh, deal with, uh, transitioning from Prince T'Challa to King T'Challa and the challenges that are coming with that. As far as culturally being culturally significant, I myself have always had a certain confidence about myself, um, have always felt like... Um, Nobody is going to dictate to me as a black man what I'm supposed to be doing. Do I have to be an athlete? Do I have to be the comic relief? Uh, do I have to be? No, it's always been this is what I like to do. Uh, as you can see, I'm a comic book nerd. And um, that's not usually something that we're depicted in. Um, but that was the path that I was like, I don't have a problem choosing that. But for so many others... Uh, that share uh, my complexion, uh, you start to feel like you you have to play a certain role. Uh, you have to be this stereotype. You have to be that stereotype. Um, this is what we do. At one point uh, in the movie, as the movie was closing, and the credits, the ending credits are going down the screen, and people are getting up, getting ready to leave. Uh, you could tell there's a lot of people that don't watch a lot of Marvel movies because they were getting ready to leave out the theater. Uh, but again, this movie brought them to the theater, so... There's that. Uh, there was a young gentleman, a brother was getting up, getting ready to leave. And he said, man, after watching that, man, I feel like I could go take over the world. Think about that. When was the last time that brother got a chance to watch a movie and 
literally say those words as he's getting re getting ready to leave. He's like, I feel like I could take over the world. How empowering is a movie like that? I'm sure there's been plenty of other movies that he's watched where he didn't walk out of the movie going like, I feel like I could take over the world. Maybe it validated uh, or depicted certain things that he's seen in his environment. And he's like, yeah, that it is what it is. You know, but for him to say, I feel like I could take over the world was very telling, especially when I'm hearing it. And in my mind, I've always felt like I could go take over the world. It was never a thought for me. I never had any self-doubt about myself. But that was just that moment. That was just that one gentleman that was getting up and getting ready to leave the theater. Imagine how many other times that played out. How many other eyes literally watched this movie and was just like, I feel different now. It's almost as significant as uh, the morning after that election in 2008. When you wake up the next morning, you're like, wow. I mean, I feel like I've been validated because somebody that looks like me, that has hair texture like me, just got elected to the highest office, not just in the land, but in the world. Barack Obama becoming president was very significant. It was a watershed moment in history. A lot of people were kind of trying to downplay like, oh, well, if why is this so significant? It's so significant because if you don't see yourself in certain roles every day, these are very significant uh, roles to see played out for us. I saw another video um, maybe a few months back after the first trailers were coming out for Black Panther. And in that video, I believe it was on Instagram, um, there's two brothers standing there and they're looking at the movie poster inside of a movie theater. As they're leaving out the movie theater, they see the movie poster for Black Panther. And they're like, look, this is black actor, black actor, black actress, black actress, black actor, black actress. Look at all these faces and they're all black and we never see that. And so his response was like, wow, y'all see this every day, every day in media and magazines and advertisement and movie posters. It's nothing to you. I would think this was my country too if I saw that every day. We don't get to see that every day. So the cultural significance of a movie like this that doesn't bolster stereotypes, that actually shows depictions of who we really are. I grew up watching The Cosby Show. I grew up watching A Different World. I grew up watching Family Matters. I grew up watching shows like that where I actually did get to see who I felt like I was, what I saw in my household, what many of my friends saw in their own households. But those aren't the status quo of what we get to see as black men and black women, black children. Uh, we don't get to actually see those in major media. Most of the time, it's negative depictions, very stereotypical depictions, um, which inform others on how they interact with us, which inform others on how they're going to depict us, which inform others on certain suspicions about us when they see us. So this movie changes that narrative um, in so many major ways. And the fact that you're seeing reports of it was projected to make over a hundred million, uh, over 150 million. Apparently it's on its way as of today, as of right now, me recording this, it's projected to break 215 million in just the first three days of its release. Um, I think the budget may have been about 200 million. So this is the first three days. We're not talking about Blu-ray DVD releases or anything like that. We're not talking about subsequent weekends after this and, um, and those ticket sales. So anyway, I can go on, on and on about this. Um, as far as the rating is concerned for toys, noise, and action figures, as you know, with the tour reviews, I usually do if it's whack, uh, which means in the case of a movie, if it's whack, don't go see it. Save your money. Don't worry about it. You won't miss it. You won't be mad at it. Matter of fact, if it's whack and it shows up on network television, just skip the channel. Don't waste that time in your life. You can't get that time back. Cool. Cool is... You don't have to go see it in theaters. If you catch it on network television or if you want to buy the DVD when you see it in the Walmart 788 bin, yeah, go ahead. Wait for that. Then there's uh, Dope. Dope is, yeah, go check it out. Matter of fact, visit the concession stand, get some popcorn, go enjoy it. Why not? It'll make a great date movie. Go out, go see it. And then there's Classic. Classic is literally, it changes, it's culturally shifting, it changes things. It's a game changer. Go see it, go see it once, twice, three times. Make sure when it comes out on Blu-ray or DVD release that you that you buy the special edition of it. That's a classic. And without saying, I know you guys don't have to guess, um, I won't leave you in suspense. This is a classic movie 
Go see it. Take your kids to see it. It's important that you take your kids to see it. This is the type of depiction. This is the type of media that we need to have and that needs to continue to happen. Bet on Black. This is a one of those movies that shows that uh, you could depict black people in a certain light, that we could have different roles, things that actually speak to what more of us are, and you're going to be able to get that um, back. You're going to be able to make your money back on it over and over and over again, 10 times over, 20 times over. This is a classic movie. Make no mistake about it. If you haven't seen it yet, run out and go see it. I'm so happy that I got a chance to see it twice this weekend. And again, and actually after I saw it a second time last night, um, it answered even more questions that I showed me things that I actually kind of missed uh, the first night that I saw it because the first night I was just trying to take it all in. Uh, the second time I saw it, it was like, wow, I didn't even notice that. So I'm sure the third time I go see it um, this coming weekend, uh, there'll be more things that I'll that I'll catch on it. Also, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. Um, this week, I'm going to be also doing a review on the Ikoye Build-A-Figure from Marvel Legends um, from the Six Inch line. Um, and I'm also going to be doing the uh, Nakia um figure review for uh, we're gonna be doing that next week anyway so make sure to stay tuned for that and uh keep hanging out with us anyway i'm gonna wrap this up as always thank you for tuning in this has been toys noise and action figures i've been your host red cheney and as always be good to yourself be good to others show empathy open your toys play with them you work hard peace